welcome to the Eagle Algo demo. Uh, we've been working with Ishan and the whole team for quite a while, working to kind of get you guys onboarded with this algorithm. It's a great tool, um, not only if you're a beginner as a trader, uh, but also, you know, if you're if you're an expert, right? If you're an experienced trader. And uh, in advance, I want to apologize. I have a French bulldog who's snoring on the couch next to me. Um, he snores like a literal train horn. So again, just apologies in advance uh, throughout this, you guys will hear him. So I thought that what we would do first is kind of just go through the uh, Eagle Algo document um, and talk a little bit about what all that stuff means, show you exactly how to set up uh, Eagle Algo in your trading view, and then uh, talk about a little bit of background behind Eagle Algo. And then if you guys had any questions, that would uh, be great. All right, so good. So without further ado, the first thing you do when uh, you get onboarded to Eagle Algo is you go onto Trading View and you pick out a chart, right? So what I'm going to do here, and for all intents and purposes, I'm going to launch Bitcoin uh, Tether chart. So I launched this chart. This is great. Let's just pretend I don't have this here. And um, the second thing you need to do is you're going to go over here to candles. You're going to select uh, Heike and Ashi, right? Normally, I think uh, TradingView comes in bars like this or however it comes. You're going to select Heike and Ashi. And then you're going to go to indicators. Invite only. Eagle Algo. Okay. So pretty simple there. Um, and then if you want to adjust, we suggest, you know, clicking auto in the bottom right, and then you can kind of just drag and uh, toggle around. Okay. So that's, you know, the simple, the simple setup of Eagle Algo. And um, it's, it's not too intensive. And again, if you guys have any questions on the subject, feel free to ask in stream chat and I will try and go through, um, go through it in a little bit more detail. But that's the simple setup, and now I want to go through the uh, Eagle Algo document over here. So we're going to put this in full screen, scroll to the top here. Perfect. All right, so welcome to Eagle Algo. Here we have the setup for Eagle Algo, which you guys you know, already saw. We literally just went through it. And if you have any questions there on this first page, feel free to uh, write it in the stream chat, and I'm happy to answer anything and everything you guys have to ask. So next, the next thing we do is we talk about the sensitivity, right? And I get a lot of questions in my inbox uh, specifically about sensitivity settings. So the general rule for us, right, is as we uh, go higher in frequency of trades, meaning lower time frames, right, we're trading more often, we want to go with lower sensitivity. So in order to adjust your sensitivity, we just go in here where we have Eagle Algo and we go to the settings. So here... I already have my uh, sensitivity set at two, and we suggest uh, keeping your sensitivity for you know higher time frames, anything really above 45 minutes, at your sensitivity at um, 1.6 to two, and then under 45 minutes you can go as low as 0.9. So here you could see for Bitcoin, for example, we are on the one-day chart, and I have my sensitivity set at two. So for a low frequency of trade, we're going with a higher sensitivity, if that makes sense. Okay. So as we go through the uh, as we go through the document here, it basically just explains exactly what I just said. Um, super simple and um, self-explanatory for the most part. And again, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask in the stream chat. Love to converse with all of you and uh, whatnot. All right. Then as we keep going, we could talk about finding optimal entries and exits with the algorithm on different time frames and things of that nature, right? So I'll get into that a little bit more on the next page because we have some trade setups, but I wanted to talk to you guys about the uh, alerts that can be set up from the algorithm. So if you come back over here, you guys can actually set up alerts inside of your own uh, trading view setup in addition to the alerts that um, Ishan and the team are pushing out inside of the chat. Yeah, I will uh, I will explain the sensitivity and time frame again in just a second, man. I got you. So in terms of setting up alerts, it's fairly easy, right? So since you're with the Eagle Algo, you have different conditions here. You press on your condition and you'll go to Eagle Algo. And you can see that instead of, you know, all these different uh, conditions that have to be met, 
with Eagle Algo for the indicator, you could just set it to buy, sell, or trend direction change. And what we do is we set these always to once per bar close, um, depending on your time frame, but always once per bar close, and then you can set your alert, right? So pretty self-explanatory there, if you wanted to set your own alerts. Um, what we're going to do, and uh, what Ishan and the Eagle team are going to do, and that I'm doing with them as well, is that we are going to push out a bunch of different alerts from two to 400 different assets across asset classes. And that's, you know, your top uh, crypto assets, a lot of, a lot of uh, assets from the stock market, maybe a few um, assets from Forex and uh, commodities futures and things of that nature, but mostly focus on the stock market, uh, where on higher timeframes, you guys will get consistent by sell alerts throughout the day, um, as long as the market's open, right? And we're doing so in a way that you guys are obviously not overloaded with different alerts, but a way in which that it's it's actually meaningful. So for example, um, we're here on the one day, right? And you see how often Bitcoin, this is Bitcoin, yeah, how often Bitcoin really changes um, changes its mind for the algorithm. So I think if I had to guesstimate, I mean, this is September 29th, November 17th. So it took a month and a half, right? On the one day chart for Bitcoin to change its mind or Eagle Algo to change its mind on a, on Bitcoin's on Bitcoin's buy sell. So you guys will get alerts, you know, at meaningful times on higher time frames, and you can place trades with very high conviction by doing so. And I wanted to just go back a second uh, to answer your question, Basuj, um, to re-explain the sensitivity versus the time frame. So to get into your sensitivity, you go right here in Eagle Algo, click on your settings, and the lower your frequency of trade, right? So essentially the higher your time frame, because you won't be trading as frequently on a higher time frame, obviously. You want to have higher sensitivity and vice versa. So the uh, higher your frequency of trade, meaning the higher your time frame, the lower your sensitivity will be. So for anything really above a 45 minute time frame in terms of charting from 45, 45 minutes all the way up to one month, we suggest a minimum of 1.6 sensitivity and a maximum of 2.1, 2.2 sensitivity. Alternatively, anything under 45 minutes and all the way down to, I mean, I guess the one second, we suggest that you go with, we suggest that you go with anywhere from 0.9 to 1.6 sensitivity. And you guys can kind of tailor those to exactly what you want. And a lot of the times the sensitivity really does matter. So we, we really suggest staying within the range uh, that's recommended. It's how the algo is built and how it performs best. And uh, this will definitely bring you guys the most benefits and the most winning trades in the uh, short and long term. Was that good for you, Busage or Basuj? Cool. Awesome. Thank you for chiming in. Nice to uh, interact. All right. So as we keep going through this document, uh, we talk about swinging the notifications and curating a trade. And uh, we want to talk about the type of charts that we want to avoid, right? So everyone can see my screen here. And we have three or two situations in which you really want to avoid a chart. And then one situation which works for a, uh, I'll answer your question in a second, uh, Kent. gotcha. Two situations here where uh, we want to avoid a trade, right? And then a final situation here where a trade makes a lot of sense. So if you look here at the top trade setup, we see an intense drop at the end here, right? So something something that we like to do, especially with the algorithm, is that in the case of an intense drop off, we always need a confirmation, right? So we wait until the first candle closes and then sell upon the second uh, sell upon the second confirmation. This we do this because a lot of times, especially on low time frames, if we don't get that confirmation on that sell signal, that confirming candle. Um, especially on a low time frame, the algo will flip to buy a lot of the time and you could lose money on that trade. And that's obviously what we want to avoid here, right? All right. Additionally, we'll go down to the second chart here. And these, this is just like very chopped up conditions. And this picture is from a very um, high time or low time frame. I think it's from maybe a one to five minute chart, right? And you could see, and we were talking about compared to the, uh, compared to the one day, you know, how often how often we switch from buy to sell on the algo on the one day versus how often we switch on the one to five minute chart, right? So we see here we're flipping buy, sell, buy, sell, buy, sell. Um, and although 
although um, some of these trades would have made you some profit, right? Like these first two buy signals, you definitely would have made a little bit of money there. The sell signal sandwiched in between got obviously got, you know, confused and misconstrued um, due to the fact that we were, you know, trading so very, um, trading so close together and uh, things of that nature. So we want to avoid charts where it's super choppy on a low time frame, right? We want to make sure that we have these confirmations. The algo is best used in the in the use case in which, um, or not best used, but it's it's used. You know, the ideal use case for the algo is that you have a trade idea and you're performing TA, and then you load the algo onto your chart and you say, okay, this is a great confirmation for me. This is a second confirmation, right? So, for example, um, for example, Ken thinks. Bitcoin up here is gonna is gonna crash, right? Um, all the way up here. So C Ken's like, all right, like I have a pretty good idea that I should sell. He then loads up the algo, sees a strong sell confirmation, and he's like, all right, now I'm sure that now I'm sure it's gonna sell off and places a short on Bitcoin and makes a ton of money and so on and so forth, right? All right. Then I mean this is pretty self-explanatory, but these are the types of charts that we want to aim for, right? Nothing too choppy, easy to swing, better entries and exits. Uh, we want to be as clean as possible because, I mean, as we all know, trading is a very, very emotional game, right? And, you know, one bad trade can set you all out of whack. And you want to make sure that um, you want to make sure that the chart that you're reading is in calmer conditions, right? So, again, you wait for that confirming candle on the buy. You wait for that confirming candle on the sell or the short. And uh, you move on from there. Let's move on a little bit. Here we just talk about uh, here we talk about that. That ideal trade setup with sensitivities, which I already explained to you guys, and uh, these are just charts that you want to avoid. And I already explained this, right? Uh, high time frame charts with low sensitivities, you just don't want to do so. Low time frame charts with high sensitivities, you don't want to do so either, right? And you see, but in both of these situations, um, especially here with this buy sell, um, things happen so quickly, and it's just you you want to avoid them, and that all brings you back here, right? where you want to look for charts that are clean, easy to swing, smooth movements, and um, just to get you that ideal entry and exit. All right, then executing your trades. I mean, this is just a little bit of, this is just a little bit of trading logic that, um, a little bit of trading logic that we use. But um, we definitely use, we definitely use, especially for the short-term trades, the two or 4% rule. And, um, you know, just reading this it means that, you place your stop two to four percent below entry with your first take profit placed at the first di at the same distance and um if volatility is high you do four percent if slower markets use two percent and that kind of brings us back to our three to one risk reward ratio right so what i like to do when trading is when i set up and there is no there is no trade setup right now on the uh one day chart but if we go to say the five minute maybe we'll have something yet. here we go on the five minute right we have a trade set up here so you can maximum lose 2% on your trade and maximum profit 6% on your trade. And this is, again, shorting with no leverage and whatnot. But it's a 3 to 1 risk-reward ratio, and the algorithm, through all of its back tests, hits at 90 to 92% uh, a win rate. So it's uh, pretty incredible. Again, my sensitivity isn't adjusted here. This trade is obviously dramatic. Um, just showing you guys for you know all intents and purposes. All right, so we click auto here and we're back to the trade setup. That's very important, by the way. As you uh, as you switch to different time frames, it's important that you just kind of click auto here and uh, mess with your chart a little bit. All right, see, so Kent, I'm going to answer your question now first. Yeah, so in terms of the pro version, um, I don't think it's so necessary, to be completely honest. I mean, it's pretty expensive, right? Shared screen, screens, produced video. Oh, sorry about that. All right, I'll get to that in a second. Anyways, um, in terms of upgrading to Pro, the only thing that you really get is that you get to have multiple indicators on your screen, and then you get to go to super low time frames. Like I can go to the one second chart right now, and oh God, yeah, I have to adjust the sensitivity, but I can go to the one second chart right now and watch algo do its thing right so which i mean who's trading on the one second chart so like you could see you know and this is kind of cool for you guys to watch just to like kind of watch the algo do its thing yeah thank you boris i appreciate it 
so you guys can watch this while I speak for a second, but you just can kind of watch the algo do its thing um, on the one second. Um, but yeah, in terms of in terms of getting pro, I don't really see the uh, I don't really see the reason to do so um, unless you're trading on like one to five second intervals. Uh, see, Kent, there's just really there's really no need. So yeah, no, I, I don't I don't see the uh, I don't see the reason to do so. Um, Boris, in terms of the uh, in terms of the take profits. Um, it's based on basically the combination of all seven different indicators that are that are uh, tweaked ever so slightly to work in tandem in order to give a perfect trade setup. Right. And I will go through that in a little bit. I have a, a, a little slide that I prepared for you guys that will go through all the different indicators that uh, make up the algorithm. Um, so short answer. And sorry, that was a little tangent. No, Boris, um, it's not entirely based on Fibonacci candles. And by the way, if you guys are watching Algo on the uh, one second here, just doing its thing. Pretty cool now. Sell, buy. I guess it, <laughs> you got quick fingers, you make a little bit of money on 100x leverage. But um, yeah, super cool, super simple. And um, we'll get back to that. So anyways, here we talk about the three to one uh, risk reward ratio, and that's pretty much it for the Eagle Algo intro packet. All right, let's see if this will X out, cool. All right, now, unless anyone has anything else, I want to go through the in-depth explanation of the Algo. So what this is, the six different indicators that are kind of combined that allow the algorithm to do what it does and uh, predict, you know, correct, viable buy-sell signals, which is really, you know, the core of what the algorithm's purpose is, right? Um, telling you when to buy and when to sell is is the uh, the biggest and most valuable output that um, Eagle Algo does, right? So we'll go through them here. So what we're going to do first, talk about the uh, public sentiment scanner. And this is super cool, especially for crypto, right? So let me explain a little bit further. So for a basic ML system, right, it makes sense to, to implement an ML system in things like the stock market and Forex, but in crypto, right, things, are, things generally move um, a lot more due to public sentiment. And since we have to operate, you know, across all asset classes, something, something really cool that the algorithm does is that, especially on crypto, the uh, public sentiment scanner is is, you know, I guess turned up to the max, but it still, it still um, acts as a, kind of like it takes a smaller role in terms of uh, the indicators outputs in terms of other assets um, in different asset classes. But we have a public sentiment scanner that essentially searches Google, Twitter, um, Instagram, and Facebook for positive and negative information on different assets that uh, helps us to play into you know the general output that the algorithm gives. Then we have a momentum oscillator. Um, we have a momentum oscillator. And uh, it's a derivative of the basic momentum oscillator that's like generally utilized in the market. And um, this is just one of the things, and this is just one of the things that has been tweaked throughout the four years that this algo has been under development. And um, pretty much all of these different indicators have been have been tweaked about 40 to 50 times throughout the years um, to the point where they kind of work in harmony and that we can get that sweet spot, that 90 to 92% um, trade winning ratio. So all of these have been tweaked kind of to our liking. Then we have a volume reader and um, yeah, the system scans for specific accumulation lots um, and sell patterns to detect large holding moves. And that's, you know, just pretty standard. Uh, then we have an MACD and an SMA crossover. And uh, so separate, separate these two indicators are, are pretty good. And I, when I, you know, before I had an algorithm, I used to trade with a lot of these things, but it didn't make much sense. Um, but blended together as a confirmation for entries and exits, this is kind of the thing that influences where we enter and exit the most. And a lot of the times why I tell you guys um, and why I just told you guys that we like to uh, that we like to wait full candle before placing our trade, kind of like a confirmation, the MACD and the SMA crossover really helps us to do so. Then we have the money flow indicator. Uh, keeping up with the inflow of assets to and from exchanges plays a definitive role in uh, monitoring possible drops. And um, the system detects specific deposits and withdrawals to gain early sentiment. And then we have our RSI, Relative Strength Index. And um, it's it's pretty similar to the tweaked momentum oscillator in terms of like the base code behind it. 
but uh, we tweaked it a little bit so that, well, I guess what we would consider complete optima optimization. And uh, all of these six different indicators um, work in harmony, right, to create exactly what Eagle Algo outputs. And um, the reason that I could kind of go in and tell you that our algorithm is a blend of these six different um, these six different indicators because you know they're all tweaked so much so to the point that even like even me telling you the six different indicators um, <laughs> the six different indicators to put into that we you know use as inputs into our algorithm to get our amazing output um, it's tweaked so much to the point that it would just it would it's almost impossible to copy right so without further ado if you guys have any other questions. I am more than happy to answer them. If not, you could just watch the algorithm do its thing on the one second for a little bit. But um, definitely, definitely let me know if you guys have any questions. I'd love to speak to you guys, interact with you guys, and I definitely want to do a, a couple of these, a couple, of, a couple more of these, um, whether it's like a weekly thing or, you know, twice a week or whatever. Hey Boris, all right, perfect. Does the performance of the algo depend on the volume in the market? No, it does not. So we were talking over here about the uh, volume reader, right? And um, all right, let me say this. So specifically in the crypto market, volume, when there's lower volume, the algo actually performs well, right? So in times like a bear market, the algo performs generally well because there isn't as much activity going on in the market and it can create like really, really clear and concise and smooth entries and exits. Uh, but in things like the stock market, the volume doesn't really matter um, in terms of the algorithm's performance, uh, low or high, it's able to, low or high, it's able to uh, navigate those things pretty easily. Thanks, Boris, appreciate the question, man. If nothing else, are you guys enjoying watching the algo do its thing on the one second? Although it isn't useful, it's just cool to watch it work in real time, right? No problem, Boris, got you, man. Anyone else uh, got anything for me? Happy to answer any and all questions, personal questions. Um, questions, concerns, thoughts. Oh, we got someone coming in here. Newbie, can you elaborate a little bit on that? Um, is there a method to scan for buys at the end of the day on the scanner? Um, just can you be a little bit more specific so that I can kind of, uh, you know, yeah, thank you. Appreciate you. Wow, big candle, look at that. All right. While uh while newbie is typing or yeah while newbie is typing I'll answer your question. Ong or O N G. Sorry, just an elementary question. Maybe there's a guide somewhere. How do I add this to my Trading View Pro Plus? Hopefully somebody can point me in the right direction or link in Discord. Ong. All right. Perfect. All right. Here you go, bud. Um, I'll help you out really quickly here. So just uh let me know if this if this works for you, and if not, then I'll explain a little bit slower. So. You start on a chart like this, right? Let's say that we go to Bitcoin, okay? You go to your candles, you click Heiken Ashi, right? Make sure that your candles are in Heiken Ashi. You go to your indicators, invite only scripts, and then you just click Eagle Algo and it will apply, all right? Then for complete optimization, you can click auto. Obviously it doesn't work here with the sensitivity. I have to change my sensitivity um, a lot. 
but you can click auto or you can just manually adjust the chart to your liking. Um, Ong, does that work for you, bud? Cool, glad I could help. All right, newbie, let me get to you. On the daily chart you showed us where the buys and sells were, is there a slower time frame, of course? That's a slow, yeah. So let's say today ended with a buy, is there a scan that can identify buys at the end of the day? So, newbie, we do not have something in place um, specifically for that, but that is, that's a really cool thought and something that I would love to implement in the future. I assume that you mean something along the lines of, um, you know, at market close, like specifically, obviously, for the stock market. Sorry, Ang. Click auto is in the bottom right-hand corner, right here, right next to log. Um, newbie, anyways, I assume that you're talking about, you know, at market close, scanning for buy signals um, for, you know, the next day or if you're working post-market or pre-market. Um, that's something really cool that doesn't, that's something really cool that we don't have in there yet. But I would say that, you know, if there are buy signals um, at the end of the day, then you can kind of just look through the charts that you're applying those to and um, kind of input those for post or pre-market or uh, for the next day of trading. So one thing that um, TradingView in Pine Editor, which is the coding language in which TradingView uses to implement, yeah, you can scan your watch list, awesome. Yeah, so one thing that um, TradingView has not implemented into their Pine script yet for whatever reason that it really sucks is they do not allow you to implement a scanner, right? So for all of these alerts, uh, we kind of have to, we kind of have to implement them manually by hand. Um, so it's it's really cool. Uh, well, it's not cool at all, actually. Um, it's something that we're working on, and uh, myself and Ishan and the rest of the team are, are actively working on trying to figure out a way and in contact with TradingView uh, in terms of making a solution there. But for right now, all alerts are manual. Boris, is there a way I could take off take profit marks? Kind of makes a longer period chart, like one hour and one day, so very confused. Um, I don't think that there's a way that you could take off your take profit. Yeah, no, there is not. Um, how does it confuse you though? Maybe, or seem, how does it make it seem condensed for you? Maybe I can help. And uh, something that may make it seem less condensed is if you were to, you know, switch your time frame or switch your sensitivity a little bit for us. So for example, I'll stay on Bitcoin here um, on the one day chart. And again, we click auto. So if there was a trade set up here, um, what you would do is you would have, you know, your, let's say it was a buy signal, right? You would have your stop loss, say down here, and then your three take profits kind of up here, right? Um, I'm not sure what seems so condensed about it um, on your, you know, on your screen. And if you want to DM me after this and kind of shoot me a picture, I can, I could probably help you reconfigure that so that it looks better. Um, but if you go to the one hour, for example, this is this is a condensed to you type thing. So when things like this do look super condensed for me, I do think that the uh, take profits are super valuable, right? So kind of what I do is I tend to stretch out the chart manually to make it seem a little bit less condensed, right? Um, the take profits, I mean, since they are embedded into the embedded into the code of the algorithm, um, yeah. So um, you pressed, the, if you look in your top left corner there, there's a six with a down arrow right under Bitcoin US dollar. You added the algorithm six different times. So you can exit out of five of those. <laughs> I'll get on. And yeah, Boris, um, just make sure that you click auto in the bottom right hand corner. Unfortunately, in Pine Editor, uh, there is no way that I can auto adjust the chart um, to make it look perfect, right? Um, I think TradingView does that so that they can, so that you know their auto button has some use, unfortunately. And um, they're kind of they're uh, they they did so the way that they implemented Pine Editor, um, their own programming language was kind of so that they could still have some type of control over what people see on their charts. And it's super frustrating, right? Because you know obviously there's limitations, and we can only do um, 
only do things to the bounds and parameters in which what TradingView says we can and can't do. So super frustrating there, yeah. Um, I don't know if that has anything to do with why yours looks like a straight line per se. You should have access to the one minute chart. Um, yeah, I think it's just that you put six different indicators in there. Um, and it looks like you have some other indicators in there as well that are mixed with the algo. So I don't really know exactly what's going on there. You can always DM me personally after this and I can help you out. But it seems like you have a lot more going on there um, than just Eagle Algo. Yeah, there you go. That looks a little bit better. All right, cool. Yeah. And then you can either, you know, press auto or, you know, via the uh, right here, via the two toggles, you can kind of adjust uh, what the chart looks like to you and uh, optimize that for your own experience. But that looks pretty good to me. Yeah, good stuff, Ong. All right, cool. Does anyone else have any questions, uh, any questions pertaining to Eagle Algo? Um, price structure? anything really um boris there is there isn't really a range, right? So I mean, I can pull up like past performance from the algo in terms of um, and I, I don't know like what's on my computer. I don't want to go through it right now, but for the next one, I will. Um, the algo really performs well across assets, across asset classes. Um, what I would say is that the algo thrives in, in volatility, right? So specific assets that have high volatility the at the algo really thrives especially on um especially on higher time frames so that works specifically well for like the crypto market and then and then um stocks like tesla and um stocks like tesla and uh like penn national gaming and things of that nature yeah it's really nice on tesla and then obviously you know with crypto um crypto is just like especially volatile right so the algo really um really performs well there. But yeah, across assets it, it works awesome. Yeah, Apple too, all of them. Um again, the algo hits at like 90 to 92% uh, win rates on all of its trades. So you very very rarely see um see the algo fail, right? In both in like in a live respect and uh, in retrospect. I appreciate the uh, interaction, Boris and Ong. If not, I'd just be sitting here. Of course, guys. Thank you both so much. Uh, I really appreciate it. A lot of a lot of hard work went into it, so I'm glad that you guys are finding it finding it useful. And um, I look forward to you guys making some money, some profitable trades from using the algo. Definitely. Glad you're enjoying it, newbie. Um, I'm here to help. You know. Is there anything else that you guys want me to uh, go through before I log off? I mean, we have what nine? Yeah, nine minutes left. So. Any any last questions, requests, um, anything? Yeah, it's it's pretty much strictly stock prices, but for it, it's really optimal for um really optimal for options trading because you know these these buy and sell signals um have curated take profits right so you can essentially do something along the lines of using an execution system and then you know perfectly setting up your trade hey cb uh, um, did that answer your question bud 
I'm not sure I understand. Oh, what? Um, that, all right, cool. Uh, CB, sorry if I reviewed before. What time or what time frames work best for day trading swings and equities? Um, I, you know, personally prefer the 45 minute time frame, right? So we can go to it on on Bitcoin um, and see if there's a trade setup. There is. Um, let me see my sensitivity again, guys. Shifting up your sensitivity at yeah, 1.7 is fine. Shifting up your sensitivity really is the most important thing um, on this algorithm. And uh, again, I'll go over it one more time. The lower your frequency of trades, the higher your sensitivity should be, right? So on the one day chart, your sensitivity should go, you know, in the range of 0.5 to 2.5, all the way up to 2.1. On the one minute chart, with a higher frequency of trade, your sensitivity go, should go down all the way to 0.9. And uh, that's the most optimal thing. But to answer your question, CB, in short, I find that for uh, all of the above mentioned, that the 45-minute time frame is my favorite my favorite time frame to use. I get a perfect amount of buy sell signals, um, even if you just wanted to trade like one chart, right? So you see a couple um, a couple swings throughout the day, and yeah. X Toffer, what's the cost? So the cost, and you can see it right here. Is right now it's on sale for thirty-seven dollars a month, and that includes that includes the forty-five minutes, maybe forty-five minute chart. So it's thirty-seven dollars per month for the algo in your trading view, and in addition to the uh, trading view algo, you also get access to all the buy sell alerts uh, that are going to come through Eagle's Eagle uh, Eagle Eye Bot, and you also get access to a bunch of different uh, Discord plugins where you guys will be able to you know say hey. Um, exclamation point BTC 45 minute and it'll pull up an algo chart from the Bitcoin 45 minutes so something that just like is really easy and saves you time and all of those things obviously work across asset classes thank you for the question man um uh, da, 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 da. how do I get the indicator that says take profit shot yeah so if you're on a chart right now and we'll go back to Bitcoin right here right so we're on, I'm on a chart right now and you see it says take profit one, two, and three and stop loss. So what it's saying is that on the 45 minute, all six indicators are strong enough that we can point that we can point to um, that we can point to a perfect trade setup. So the fact that it's saying here, okay, not only are we issuing a buy signal, but we are also you know issuing you a full trade setup with automated take profits and stop losses means that on the 45 minute, Bitcoin's chart, um, Bitcoin's chart is strong enough in terms of the six indicators that I went over before that um, we can offer a trade setup. And this is one of the best things about the algorithm, right? So you go up here to the one day and I'll press auto again. You can see that we're bearish, but we don't have a trade setup. So what that means is that all six indicators from the algorithm are not matching up um, strong enough to the point where we could suggest a trade setup. So most other algorithms will always have a trade set up for you, right? I mean, I haven't seen really many more algorithms at all, but most of them will always have a trade set up. Here, since we have things like the public sentiment scanner and other things that are really intuitive, the algo kind of knows, hey, since we don't have, since we don't have that, um, that perfect storm of all six of our indicators, we're not gonna offer a trade setup. So it's the algo still acknowledged, hey, you know, we're gonna sell off, right? But next, it's saying, okay, we're not, we're confident that we're, you know, in a sell, but we're not so confident in a trade that we're going to put it out there. Exactly, exactly, on. And that's, you know, that's like the best thing about the algo, in my opinion, right? Um, so it won't put you in a situation where, and why we have that 90 to 92 percent win rate. And I, I promise you, this was not the case in the first like 40 iterations of this thing. But um, why we have that 90 to 92% win rate is because we don't suggest trades where we don't force trades, right? We're not going to force you here. I mean, listen, I'm sure if the algorithm had to suggest something here, um, some sort of buy signal really only makes sense considering the trend lines and the resistance, right? But, you know, the public sentiment scanner, we're probably pretty high on the fear and greed index for Bitcoin, and it only makes sense. And I'm sure that there's a couple things that say, hey, we still may be bearish. We still may go down a little bit more. So when the algo disagrees with itself, it's going to say, okay, we're not going to offer a trade setup and allow people to go ahead and put their money into trades that could prospectively lose, right? Oh, 
Yeah, man. I mean, I'm I'm still working on it. It's constantly in development. It's not going to be thirty-seven dollars a month for long, uh, regardless. But I'm constantly working on it. And I mean, shit, ninety and excuse my language, ninety to ninety-two percent accuracy is like thirty percent better than anything I've seen that's actually been back tested in the marketplace. So, thank you, boss. I appreciate it. I really do. All right, I'm going to be hopping out, out of here in two minutes. So any final questions or queries, um, I'll probably answer, you know, two more questions and then uh, we will be out of here and we will do another one of these soon.